Time for the hot topic of the hour. New Fox News polls finding former President Trump leading President Biden by five points nationally in a head-to-head -head matchup. This is his biggest lead yet against Joe Biden. In a hypothetical five-way race, Trump is ahead at 43 percent, with Biden behind him and JFK Jr. at 12 percent, coming in at number three. Joe Biden's at 38 percent. When asked what the Biden administration's greatest accomplishments are, 38 percent said nothing. Just over half of those voters said that they are worse off today than compared to 2020. Mark Tepper, your reaction? I cannot imagine who's better off. Maybe squatters, maybe migrants are better off. Illegal, but yeah. illegal migrants. Exactly. Are better off. So, I mean, look, I mean, when you look at Bidenomics, the whole philosophy there is, is President Biden wanted to grow the economy from the bottom up and middle out, but in actuality, all he's done is grow the government from the top down, middle class is bottoming out. It's not good if you are a middle class American. And Maria, I said this a week or two ago, but the, the average American with a median household income of $75,000 could care less that NVIDIA makes a new all-time high every single day. They care about the fact that they don't have enough money in their checking account to put food on the table. They care about the fact that they now have to work multiple jobs to make ends meet. Thank God for Uber and DoorDash. That is the only thing giving Americans, in addition to credit card space, a lifeline right now. That's great points all around. And the issues that matter remain immigration and the economy, Joe. I mean, look, it is quite clear that, one, you're looking at American discontent in real time. I think it's really a flashback to the greatest hits of politics yesterday. You go back to Walter Mondale, where's the beef? You go back to Ronald Reagan, are you better off today than you were four years ago? You look at even the guiding doctrine for Bill Clinton, uh, it's the economy stupid. You put all of those things, you examine Joe Biden through that lens, he fails by every monitor. So that's, I think, what most Americans are experiencing. There is no substance to the rhetoric. When when you talk about the economy, they certainly are not better off today than they were four years ago if you're looking at sovereignty on the southern border or the stability of the free world. And most importantly, if you're just looking across the board, these Americans today understand, to your point, that the same Democrats that told us the GDP was not a measure of the success of Americans are now trying to use the GDP as a distraction to the fact that they are poorer and worse off because of Joe Biden's reckless policies. Yeah, no, no uh, wonder that Joe Biden is looking for some help from his friends, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, tonight in this major fundraising in New York, Caroline. Oh, boy, and Maria, Biden's campaign is increasingly fragile. It's very spooked by independent and third-party candidates like RFK Jr., so much so that the DNC a couple weeks ago launched a special team to combat them. I mean, it's pulling out all the stops because of Biden's abysmal approval ratings, because it knows if those numbers don't change, Biden is headed for defeat, because it's that Trump nostalgia that's a serious danger to his reelection. You know, it's not about a popularity contest this time. This time, it's about quality of life four years ago versus today. The border used to be secure. Now it's wide open. Commodities used to be cheaper. Now nothing is affordable. So ultimately, it's that cross-section that voters will be using. You know, the sourness of 2020 has worn off. The pandemic is in the rearview mirror, and now people can compare with clarity. Yeah, and it's not even just about feeling worse off than 2020, but it's actually feeling scared. Crime has skyrocketed. There are no consequences for criminals. And this, again, Democrat policies. It, it, yeah, there's no law and order. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. Someone commits a heinous crime and then they're released from jail with no cash bail at all. Like, you're, you're putting criminals right back on the streets. But at the same point in time, you've got these attorneys going after non-criminals. I mean, they're, they're exhausting all their resources going after Trump, whether it's in the New York fraud case, whether it is in the Alvin Bragg case. No matter what it is, they're going after the wrong people. And people feel, yes, less safe today. They, they feel like, obviously, crime is a huge issue. And, and, and that's going to matter come the election. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons that I think Biden is behind in all seven swing states. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I think this election is about security, national security and personal security, and then the economy. Well, I think it's really about fairness, right? If yeah, you well, look at too, what yeah. is the indictment of Joe Biden's presidency, that people who do things the right way get left behind, 
and everybody else gets ushered to the front of the line. Whether you're talking about the border and the migrants getting those debit cards, getting the accommodations to live with the 300 thread count uh, while Americans are still struggling day to day, that is going to be the snapshot. Not only that you're worse off, but they don't care you're worse off. They are actively promoting the needs of everybody but the backbone of the American economy. Even as corruption is in plain sight when it comes to the Biden family, I mean, you listen to the House Oversight Committee, certainly, and it really looks bad, um, especially since Joe Biden keeps telling everybody to pay their fair share when we know that Hunter <laughs> Biden did not. No, the corruption is rampant, and I think many Americans can see through that now. It's pretty transparent. And remember, Biden promised normalcy yep. in yeah. 2020. The adults and are back in the room. And instead, he drove the country off the rails. Yeah, he sure did. Let's take a break.